to drill everything and mark everything out. Now I've prior to filming I I've actually marked this out. And this is the front and back plate. Uh, this is now ready for drilling. And I've got the two clamped together with just uh, some standard clamps that you can get from any hardware store and you may, may already have them. And what else I use in, in this case is Irwin clamps. Um, or, you know, you can use ordinary type of uh, woodworkers clamps like this. Um, but I use Irwin clamps because they're very quick and easy to, to use and almost every handyman woodworker has them. But you can use G-clamps, any type of clamps, providing you can sort of hold one piece to another. Now, in this case, this is the linear guide rail uh, and the main chassis support. So what I've done is I've laid the both of them down flat on my bench, okay, because what I wanted to achieve was to have that flat edge there, all the way down, okay? Uh, it's slightly off to one side, but that's okay, that doesn't matter. What I'm after is um, a parallel attachment to this chassis member. Okay, so all I've done is laid it on the bench, clamped it with some Irwin clamps, now I'm going to bring it out to about there and clamp the whole assembly to my bench. So now you have it firmly located onto your bench. And now, because these are all pre-drilled through the linear rail, but I need to transfer that hole into this Y-axis chassis member. Um, and to do that, I'm just going to use a standard cordless drill. Now these are the little caps head screw bolts that I'm going to use to attach this linear square rail to this chassis member. And they are 6mm. Now these are a very handy tool. A lot of you may already on one. Uh, you can pick them up for less than $50. You don't have to have a very expensive one from your local hardware store. And that's telling me it's a six millimeter. I do everything in millimeters. Uh, all the materials in millimeters. But uh, you know you can actually you know convert that to um, imperial. And you don't have to use the exact same size that I'm using. Uh, you can use here a quarter of an inch if you wanted to. Um, so what I'm doing is, where are we? I think I am. Just make sure that is a six millimeter. And it is. Um, so I'm going size for size because I know the hole in here is around six millimeters just over six millimeters but that will give me uh, you know a good start I can transfer the the hole into this material quite accurately uh, so you, what I'm saying is you don't want to tap in size okay you want the clearance size <laughs> to get an accurate hole through so you don't have to do any measuring any accurate measuring because these holes are already pre-drilled in this linear rail so to transfer it you just just a couple of millimeters in that's all you do and you go all the way down it to transfer the the hole into here and then I've got another very cheap little tool that will take care of drilling it all the way through. 
So there, all the holes are accurately marked. So I can drill them now all the way through. So this is what I use to do most of my drilling on the bench. Uh, it's a lot easier than trying to hang on to the drill and press. You need something to give you, you know, sort of an, an accurate hold down through your material. Holding it by hand, you know, you're going to either uh, move slightly and make the hole oversize, or you're going to go at a slight angle. This ensures you, uh, you know, sort of drill it fairly accurately, square. Um, now this is a drill press that I've had for more than 40 years. It's a, it's a Bosch unit. It's a German Bosch unit. It says it's a Fraz Borstander, which roughly translates to drill press, I think. Alright, so then what you need to do is be able to hold your piece that you want to drill horizontally, level. Okay, so you need something at one end because this is quite heavy. This probably weighs about oh, about five kilos. Not too bad, I suppose. Um, so you need a you know use blocks of wood, which is fine. Two blocks this end because I know that this is the, the the same height. So separate it apart, pop it on there, and I know that this is 90 degrees and held nice and flat to this. And a tool that I use in this, this is a you know sort of a it's called an Ozito, it's you know home brand type thing. But the big thing with this is it has metal gears inside not nylon so you're not going to strip them just pop that in there like that and tighten that up great now this is a six mil bolt okay so the drilling tapping size then is approximately five millimeter. Uh, you can actually get charts on the internet that tells you exactly what to work uh, or what the specific size would be but uh, I find that uh, a, a five millimeter drill if you drill it and I use two types of taps I use a, a starting tap, which is a tapered tap, and then I use a finishing tap. Uh, and I'll show you all about those. Put it in the wrong drill. So, <laughs> we'll put it in the right one. Okay, so this is cut in aluminium, and you need it to spin fairly fast. And when you're cutting aluminium or drilling aluminium, WD-40 I find is the best stuff. This and paraffin actually is pretty good as well. It, uh, it keeps the drill cool and it stops the material welding to the end of the drill and uh, it assists the cutting as well. So what I do is put a little drop of that on there to start with. Start the drill up and uh, I'm going to do something called peck drilling. And all peck drilling is it's like a bird. Okay? So you go in, so if I go in a, a couple of millimeters or you know, sort of between a sixteenth and eighteenth of an inch, and you bring it all the way back out, and then you go back in for another sixteenth to an eighth of an inch, or three millimeters, whichever 
measurement you use and then pull it back out. And on the second cut I normally give it another squirt of this. Now you do that for the full process all the way through on all the holes. Going to take some time, probably a good half an hour or more for me to uh, drill all these so I'll just demonstrate on the first one. Okay. So start it up. Now this is the method that I use to cut a thread into certainly aluminium. You can cut a thread into mild steel like this but you've just got to be a little bit more careful. Um, so I've got a Bosch drill, a uh, cordless drill. Uh, in this case it's a 18 volt. Pretty good unit. I've uh, got it set on the low speed high torque setting. I've got it done up real tight. Now we've got to cut a thread in this 25 millimeter which is an inch of aluminium to put this bolt in. Now don't be too hasty with this process all right in other words you're going to snap the tap off inside and pretty well bug it then. So, a little bit of WD-40 and what you want to try and do is hold the drill and sight it so you want to be as upright as you possibly can okay and then just start it a little bit of downward pressure so it's starting to go in and you can see it's starting to cut here I'll bring you in a bit closer. So just take it in about two or three turns and see the swarf building up there. Then back it off. That'll break the swarf. And then go in a few more turns. Back it off. A few more. Back it off. It's a lot easier for you to tap or cut a thread into a whole, you know, sort of inch of aluminium using that method than what it is, you know, sort of using a hand method. You know, you would be there all day doing it. But, uh, you know, it's going to take me to do all of these maybe possibly in a half an hour, something like that. Whereas if I, was, if I was doing it by hand, it would take me probably two to three hours. So uh, you know, you've got to make life easier for yourself. <laughs> 